To be able to use the printf function with UART, I have to include the standard input-output header in my project, which contains the declaration of the printf function. Now the next thing we need to look at is the write function, located in syscalls.c. This function is important because once printf finishes formatting the string passed to it, it calls this function to write data onto the output. Since I want the string processed by the printf to be transmitted over my UART, I need to take this function and replace its content with my code which writes the string bytes into the transmit register of the UART peripheral. The write function in this file is prepended with a weak attribute. What this means is that when I have a copy of this function in my main.c file, the function in this file will be overridden and the one in main.c will be called instead. So I will copy this function and paste it into main.c and then replace the content of this function with my code which writes character bytes from the string into the transmit register of the UART to be transmitted. I created a for loop that will terminate once all data has been written into the transmit register. In it, I used the len parameter as it gives me the number of characters in the string. In the body of the for loop, I wait until the transmit register is ready to take data again by polling the txe flag in the interrupt end status register to see if it has been set by the UART. Once the flag is set, I proceed with writing the character that the index points to in the string into the transmit register. I also cast the character to an 8-bit value as I have my UART configured for 8 data bits. If you want to learn more about UART, you can check out my other video where I cover how to configure the UART and use it to transmit and receive data. Anyway, you may have noticed that I don't make use of the file parameter that is passed to this function. I don't use it because I simply don't have a use for it in my implementation. The function also returns an integer that should specify the number of successful bytes written, which in my case will be the whole string passed into the function, as the for loop will not stop until all bytes are transmitted. So this is all there is to redirecting the printf to the UART. If I now go to main and attempt to print something out using printf, load the code onto the board and open the serial terminal, I should see the string being printed out every second. But I don't. The reason for this is to do with the printf function itself. Here the printf is set to be line buffered by default. This means that the string won't be sent to be transmitted until a new line character is detected or the buffer fills up completely. So if I add a new line character at the end of the string and now load the code onto the board, the string is being printed out every second as intended. The buffering can be turned off so that the string will be printed out immediately, which means that the new line character won't be necessary. To achieve this, I call the setBuff function and set the buffer of the standard output to null. The standard output in this case is the UART of the microcontroller. Now if I remove the new line character from the string and load the code onto the board, the string is still sent to the console. Of course, the new line character can still be used to format the string. One last thing I want to mention regarding the printf function is that the ability to print the floating point values is disabled by default. If I try to print a floating point value using the function, I will be presented with the following error. To enable floating point with printf, go to Project, Properties, C, C++ Build, Settings. Now in there you can do it in two ways. You can either go to MCU Settings and select Use Float with printf, or go to Miscellaneous under MCU GCC Linker and add this flag manually in the other flags box. Once added, apply the change. Printing floats should now work with printf. If I build and load the code onto the board, I can see the floating point number being printed out. To be able to send and receive data using the UART through the USB connection, you need to make sure that the UART you are using is connected to the ST-Link through a virtual COM port. The ST-Link itself is a piece of hardware built into the STM32 microcontroller which is used for debugging and programming the microcontroller and it is the ST-Link that will end up transmitting and receiving data through the USB connection. Using the correct UART will allow you to utilize the ST-Link through the virtual COM port to send and receive data through the USB connection. Which UART is connected to the ST-Link is specified in the user manual of the microcontroller. In my case, the UART interface available on pins P8, 2 and 15 can be connected to the ST-Link. If I look at the pinout of my board, it tells me that the UART2 transmitter is connected to P8, 2 
you can see that PA15 does not have a pin like PA2, so it is not shown on the pinout, but I can check the pin definition table in the datasheet of the microcontroller to confirm that UART2 receiver is connected to PA15. And as shown earlier, I am using UART2 for communication, which allows me to transmit and receive data using the UART through the USB connection, as it's connected to the ST link. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing and giving this video a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.